The story of the B-24 Liberator Hot Stuff and her crew is one of historic triumph and tragedy. During an interview in 2005, General Jacob E. Smart, former Chief of Staff of the United States Air Force and aide to General Hap Arnold during World War II, agreed that Hot Stuff and her crew were the first in the 8th Air Force to complete 25 missions even though the heralded Memphis Bell B-17 Flying Fortress wears the label. Hot Stuff completed 25 missions three and a half months before the Memphis Bell, but tragedy struck and she and her crew lost their rightful place in American history. Hot Stuff and her crew were ordered back to the United States to go on tour to help sell war bonds. Lieutenant General Frank M. Andrews, commander of the European Theater of Operations, was ordered to return to Washington, D.C. He contacted his friend, Colonel Ted Timberlake, commander of the 93rd Bombardment Group, and requested to fly back to the States with Captain Robert Shine Shannon in Hot Stuff. Captain Shannon was unaware that General Andrews was bringing members of his staff and others along with him. Bombardier First Lieutenant Robert Jake Jacobson, Co-Pilot First Lieutenant John Lentz, Sergeants George Farley, Leland Durham, James Craighead, and Grant Rondo were bumped from the airplane to make room for General Andrews' entourage. General Andrews, an experienced pilot, replaced Lieutenant Lentz as co-pilot. Hot Stuff left Bovington Field in England for RAF Prestwick, Scotland to get the latest weather conditions and refuel before continuing on to Reykjavik, Iceland. It was decided a stop at Prestwick was not necessary and they continued on to Iceland. On approach to Iceland, Hot Stuff encountered unexpected poor visibility due to snow squalls clouds and rain. Captain Shannon made several low passes over Caldadarne's RAF airfield but decided to continue on to land at Meeks Field near Keflavik. Zero visibility prevented him from landing so he decided to return to Caldadarne's but hot stuff crashed near the top of 1100 foot Mount Fagradalsfall. The tail gunner Sergeant George Ezell was the sole survivor of the crash. He received only minor injuries, but one of his legs was caught in the tail section and he couldn't get out. The aircraft caught fire and George thought he was going to burn to death or be killed by exploding ammunition. Heavy rain eventually put the fire out and he was rescued approximately 24 hours after the crash. Those killed on board Hot Stuff included the pilot, Captain Robert Shine Shannon co-pilot Lieutenant General Frank M. Andrews, who was also the commander of the European Theater of Operations, navigator Captain James E. Gott, radio operator Tech Sergeant Kenneth A. Jeffers, engineer Staff Sergeant Lloyd C. Weir, gunner Staff Sergeant Paul H. McQueen, Adna W. Leonard, the only civilian on board. He was also a Methodist bishop and chairman of the Corps of Chaplains. Brigadier General Charles H. Barth, General Andrews Chief of Staff. Colonel Murrow Crum, he was a member of General Andrews Staff. Colonel Frank M. Miller, U.S. Army Chaplain, Chief of Chaplains. Major Robert H. Humphrey, U.S. Army Chaplain. Lieutenant Colonel Fred L. Chapman, U.S. Army. Major Theodore C. Tomad, U.S. Army, and Captain Joseph T. Johnson, General Andrews aide. Two memorial services were held in Reykjavik, one for Staff Sergeant Paul McQueen at the Catholic Church of Christ, Landicott.
The second memorial service was held for the other 13 who were killed in the crash. It was held in the Domi Kirche, a Lutheran church next to the Parliament building in downtown Reykjavik. In June of 2012, I visited Iceland with the goal of visiting the crash site and recovering pieces of hot stuff wreckage. I was fortunate to find two Icelanders who were familiar with the crash site, Dodi and Oli Martinson. They spend much of their time searching and documenting World War II crash sites in Iceland. The day after I arrived, we were on our way to the crash site near the top of Mount Fagradalsfall. Now, straight ahead, if you look at the sign with the information, the eye, right. the, uh, and uh, the mountain, right behind that's the it. crash site. How about that? It's that close. Oh. Wow. It's only about uh, maybe a 40 minutes drive from here. Uh huh. We're heading out of Grindavik, right? Going east? No. Off road. Uh -huh. That's the mountain straight ahead. Yes. To the left. Mm -hmm. What's the name of that mountain again? Faradalsfjall. How many kilometers would you say it is to from the road? I think it's only about three kilometers. Right? Really? Three of the longest kilometers. Well, uh, <laughs> we, we actually would be traveling at a similar speed if we were walking. <laughs> I was told the mountain was fairly accessible. Maybe to sheep, <laughs> not to human beings. We have this terrible rattle that uh, they're trying to find out what it is, and we, this is the second time we've stopped. You can actually see the road that we came down behind us, uh, and we've been driving now for almost a half hour, and we're only a, probably a mile away from the actual road. What's up, Dodie? I, uh, I forgot to put in four bolts to hold the brakes to the car. <laughs> oh no! 
But they're sending someone with equipment to fix it. Okay. And I think maybe that you and Oli maybe stroll on ahead and... and uh, okay. And I'll come back in uh, half an hour, maybe an hour, and, and uh, I'll find you. Okie doke. I'm ready. Let's I'm, I'm See you later. sending you off. Okay. And uh, if you don't return, uh, is there an address or a phone number at yeah. home? <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. See you later. As we headed across a lava field, I soon discovered how difficult walking was going to be. We're starting up the mountain to the crash site. This is a hillside. Uh huh. Very steep. Yes. Forty degrees. Uh huh. Angle. Three more degrees. Everything will go down. Is that right? Wow. We're heading up toward the top because that's where the airplane went in. This gives you an idea of the rocks. Very difficult climbing. We keep climbing up and up, and it seems like there's more and more. We are here, we're at the crash site. He has a piece of metal right there. I want to collect as much as I can. Pieces of the first, airplane. First you found on your visit to the crash site. Wow. And this is just the beginning. Amazing, huh? This hillside is covered with pieces of wreckage. We're in the actual debris field of where hot stuff crashed. It actually landed up a little bit further and we're going to head up that way. really close to the top now. The winds were quite strong when we arrived at the impact area. This is looking toward uh, Keflavik International Airport. It was Meeks Field during the war. This is where they tried to land at Meeks Field but uh, couldn't. And we're heading back to Caldadon when they crashed into this mountain. We walked across this valley and climbed the mountain through that passage right there. You can see that it's pretty steep here and uh, an awful lot of the wreck went off the side of the hill, either got blown down and in many cases probably washed down. Dodie working his way over to, to some more pieces of the wreckage and you can see how difficult it is to walk. I can't believe these rocks have stayed on the side of the hill. You'd think they'd all roll down, but they don't. This is part of the main landing gear. The dried up wreath was placed on the landing gear by the United States Ambassador to Iceland, Louis Ariega, in 2011. Just let FedEx know where it is and they come pick it up? <laughs> and ship it, right? <laughs> Skull. Skull. Cheers. 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 Many of the parts uh, tumble down the mountain and this is a, looks like a prop, a hub here with the uh, reduction drive gear in the back. And, uh, there are other pieces lying around. 
This is uh, part of the turbocharger uh, from one of the engines. Uh, part of the landing gear that's within the wing structure. You see, this is part of the webs from the. Mm hmm. That uh, riveting was probably done by women in the United States. And it's a very good job, professional job. Very good, thank you. Uh, if, if I'd known I'd be filmed all day, I would have maybe combed my hair or, or, or <laughs> trimmed my beard a little. But we're going to so uh, form a search party and, and search the rough ground over here. We know of one piece out there which is fairly big which has some uh, some letters, uh, some writing on it, that, that might be interesting. Uh-huh. And maybe we would find something else. Okay. Let's do it. I'm heading down the bottom of the hill. The uh, Ole went down one way, and uh, Doty went back to get the car. And... Uh, they're supposed to meet me down at the bottom of this hill. Then we're going to walk out into the lava fields to look for more pieces. They claim that they've located a piece of the cowling. This is where we were, up the top of this mountain. It may be only 1,100 feet, but it's a tough climb. We're walking in the lava fields looking for pieces of the airplane that might have blown down the mountain. And there's a, an engine cowling out here somewhere. Dodie located a big piece of wreckage. So did Oli. Holy mackerel. Look at this. It has some writing on it. Yep. B24 does D. Aircraft number 514 G. Engine number 4 top. How about that, huh? Would you turn that around? There we go. We found these pieces in the lava field and it, they came down from the mountain. You can see behind Doty there and uh, we're quite a ways from it. And there's probably, a, there are probably lots more out here but it's very difficult to walk in the lava fields. About six or seven hundred yards from the crash site. Wow. Oh, he spotted more pieces. Another big piece. Look at that. And we're not far from the road, if you want to call it a road. By the way, this is uh, Friday, uh, June 8th, 2012. Dodie and Oli are down where we stacked up all the pieces at the bottom of the mountain. We're going to load them up. But this is uh, the mountain and where we were. Day here in Iceland. Near Mount what? Thank you very much. This is just a part of our collection of pieces of the airplane that we found. We're taking a break. A little uh, energy, a little beer. Thank you guys. And a traditional flat cake with uh, smoked lamb meat. There we go. We're going to pick up the last few pieces that we found and heading back home. Think you're going to be able to fit them all in there?
it will both be smooth to watch, but I'm going, certainly going to enjoy it. Thank you, Dodie and Ole Martinson for taking me up to the mountain. I really do appreciate it. And Jake, this was for you, my friend. The recovered pieces of Hot Stuff wreckage were returned to the United States, courtesy of Iceland Air. Some of the pieces of wreckage that Dodie, Ole, and I recovered are now in the National Museum of the Air Force at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base in Dayton, Ohio. A memorial monument fundraiser will provide long overdue recognition for Hot Stuff, her crew, and those who lost their lives in this tragic accident. You can help with your tax-deductible donation to the 93rd Bombardment Group Association 995 Cottonwood Lane, Glenwood Springs, Colorado, zip code 86101.